Here we are. Are you ready? Action figures! Ready! Have you got... Sat down comfortably. Have you found your mum? Have you worked out where your little brother is? Are we there? Well done! Terrific. Have you had an argument yet this morning? There are so many arguments. But you have made it. The Bible is open. Calm your hearts. It's all okay. Right. So I would love to say thank you to those who have sent me in photos. Here is Molly and Charlotte. And I'm pretty sure I know what story that is. Molly and Charlotte, is this when the man who couldn't walk was healed by Jesus? I love the way you're carrying her very carefully. And here is the Craig family. Robin, Phoebe and Sam. Big smiles. And is that Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a dinosaur? And look, there's even some mini dinosaurs shouting. You have absolutely got that story well done. And there's even some sort of dinosaur coat on the floor. The only thing we're missing is your wonderful parents. Where are Phil and Ruth? I think we should make that a rule. That I want to see a parent in the photo. And I want to see if the parent's smile is just as big as the children's smile. OK, please send us your photos. I'm loving seeing it because here I am in a room entirely on my own, wondering if anyone is listening. Send me some photos of you telling your Bible stories. Send them to info at faithinkids.org or through the magic of Facebook. However you get them to us, we'll find them. It is great to have you with us. It is great we're in the Bible. Pat on the back for you. Three cheers for you sitting around with the Bible open. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hooray! Shall we have a go at today's story? I need a couple of figures at the ready and maybe even mum's wallet or purse. Okay? Shall we pray together? Dear Father, thank you that you are the Lord of everything. Everything we have is yours. Please help us to understand. Amen. Now, did you look at this story? Did you look at this story before now? Have you had a little look at it? I love it when you prepare a story. It just means you open the Bible for yourselves, you get out your action figures, and you just work out what is happening in this story. It's great when you do that. And I think you'll find when we do it together, you're thinking, I know this. This is excellent. OK, now let me tell you, when did you last say, how much does this cost? So, for instance, uh, when did you last see a water bottle and say, how much is that? Or perhaps more than anything else in the world, you want to own a brand new Middlesbrough football shirt. How much does that cost? This is mine. Or maybe you even see a boat when you're at the beach and say, Dad, how much to buy a boat? Or maybe, if you're a bit older, you even start looking around and saying, how much would a new flat cost? I wonder when you last asked, how much does that cost? In today's story, we are going to find out what Jesus thinks is a lot of money. OK, how much is a lot of money? Should we look at this story together? Let's go.
Jesus sat near the temple money box where people oh that's a funny thing there we go where people put their gifts in he watched the people put their money in so he was sat near the money box in a temple and this is where people were giving their money to people who had less to keep the temple going and really they're giving their money to God. You see, whenever we give our money away, we're saying, this is your money, God. Please, will you spend it on those who need it most? So he watched the people put in their money. As they walked past, they dropped it in and the tinkle of money sounded. Now, many rich people gave large sums of money. So as the richest people walked through, they dropped in huge amounts of money. Can you imagine that? Someone walking over. Oh, here it goes again. And then someone else comes over and thinks, I'm going to put in more money than and then they just make sure everyone is watching and then they just drop it in. That's what Jesus watched as the very wealthiest people drop their money into the money box. Then a poor widow came and gave two very small copper coins. These coins were not even worth a penny. These copper coins would be enough not even for a lollipop. And she dropped them in. I guess she would have been a bit embarrassed. It was very little money. I'm sure she didn't make a big show of it. I'm sure she hoped other people wouldn't see. Now, the question is, which of these is a lot of money? Shall we see what Jesus said? Jesus called his followers to him. He said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow gave only two small coins but she really gave more than all these rich people that's not right how on earth can two small coins be more than a whole wad of notes it's like jesus doesn't know how to do his adding up the rich have plenty. They gave what they did not need. Do you see? Jesus is saying that maybe they did give a lot of money, but they went home with fat wallets. They went home with fat wallets full of a lot more money. They did give a lot, but there was even more in their wallet. The woman is very poor and she gave all she had and she needed that money to help her live. Do you see? This was all she had. She went home with nothing. Jesus is saying that it is that woman who gave even more. He is saying that those two coins, those two coins was actually a lot of money because it's all she had. When we give money away, it is good to give away money that we not just don't need, but actually need 
it is good to give away the money we do need to show that really we're saying, God, you're in charge of all my money and I trust you. You give me every good thing and so I'm going to give you more of my money than I would choose to. Have you got into the habit of giving some of your money away? When you want to buy a lollipop and you have the money in your hand, you think you need a lollipop. You talk to your mum or your dad about it. Some people have three jars at home. One they label my money to spend, one they label my money to save, and one they label God's money to give away. It's really all God's money, but one jar where you put some of your money in to give away. Let me leave you to think about that for yourselves. Here are some questions. Remember, prayer, let's pray about our money. Let's pray about what we give away. Share. Why don't you share what we are doing so that others can read the Bible with us? And why don't you prepare? Tomorrow we are looking, listen, verse 32 of chapter 13. Are you going to remember that? Chapter 13, verse 32. It's at the end of the next chapter. It's a lovely little story. Can you prepare that? And just and as an advanced warning, on Thursday, you're going to have to really prepare. Because I'm not going to be here, but I am going to give you the questions and the passage. Because I just want you to see that you don't need me. You could open the Bible in your families on your own. So tomorrow, I'll tell you what passage you're doing on Thursday. And on Thursday, I'll give you the questions. You've prepared it. You've got your story ready. You're going to show your mum what you've got ready. You're going to talk about it and you're going to say, that Ed, we don't need him. But tomorrow, chapter 13, verse 32. Take a look at that story. It's been lovely to be here. Here are some questions. Have a chat. Threes to fives. How much money did the poor widow give? Next up, the rich people gave more money. But was Jesus, sorry, the rich people gave more money, but who was Jesus more pleased with? Did you spot that? Jesus said she really gave more than all those rich people. What does he mean? And then over 11s, so how do we decide how much to give away? How do we decide how much to give away? How do you work it out? How do you decide to give away any when you've not got very much? Talk about that. Maybe ask your parents how they think about it. Let's have a great conversation and let's pray together. See you tomorrow. Press pause.